Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to look at the overclocking abilities of the Pentium 4 3.2 GHz and also see what the ASRock 4 core dual can do. After several attempts, the last frontside bus where the Pentium 4 could boot was 226 MHz. We are also going to set a fixed AGP frequency to 66 MHz. And again, we will disable the hyperthreading. I will look over the other settings and again disable all the things we don't need. Just like with the Athlon 64 uh, 3200, the 226 frontside bus is just like a barrier where the CPU doesn't work anymore. But also the lack of voltage adjustments and other overclocking options on the motherboard didn't make this one easy. After booting into Windows, we're gonna go over to CPU-Z and CD info. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make the RAM go faster in a 2522 configuration. This is why we may see some penalty in some of the tests due to the decreased RAM frequency. Now let's look at the benchmarks. After running PC Mark, we can see the CPU improvement, but due to the lower RAM frequency, we are registering a lower memory score. Next we have the SuperPy test, where the CPU manages to complete the test in less than 40 seconds and we will continue with the rest of the tests. Now let's look at the graphs. While the overclocked Pentium 4 managed to complete the SuperPi in under 40 seconds, it is still a far way off the overclocked Athlon 64. In Cinebench 2003, the scores are not that good. Only the overclocked test manages to get it close to the original Pentium 4. It looks like the lowered memory frequency had an impact on this test. The MP3 encoding shows it being equal to the overclocked Athlon 64, but still worse than the original Pentium 4. This test may be biased towards Intel CPUs, but again, the memory may have had some impact here. The stock settings for this CPU makes it equal to the Athlon 64 and a bit worse than the original Pentium 4. The memory score is lacking because of the lowered frequency. Only the overclocked hard drive score manages to equal the original Athlon XP and the Pentium 4 478. But remember that this ASRock is not a top-of-the-line motherboard and uh, the same chipset can be found on some 478 motherboards. Then uh, Sandra 2004 shows the CPU being equal to the socket 478 Pentium 4 and the overclock just scales with the frequency in both uh, arithmetic and uh, multimedia tests. Memory just suffers from the reduced frequency. I may need to redo this test. Like I mentioned in the previous video, CPU Bench 2003 had an abnormal high value for the arithmetic logical unit in the stock setting test. The value was not carried over to the overclocked test. This is also a test I need to repeat at a later date. The floating point unit test is just on par with the Socket 478 Pentium 4. Cache Mem shows some very high levels of uh, level 1 read, but other than that it looks like we have just a regular Pentium 4 478 here. And now we move over to the graphics tests. 
Remember that there is no overclock involved here. We are running all the tests on stock settings. The 3 Mark and AquaMark just show another Pentium 4 yielding similar results. Also the rest of the Direct3D tests uh, show the Pentium 4 socket 775 being exactly equal to the original Pentium 4 socket 478. Even Sirius Sam paints the same picture. The OpenGL tests were always a bit split with the results mainly because of the drivers or settings, but in this case we are not seeing any improvement. In the final OpenGL tests the Pentium 4 is exactly the same as other CPUs except for MDK where it scores some extra points. I think this was due to the fact that the sound was disabled. Arriving on the 21st of June 2004, a whole year later than the original Pentium 4 3.2 GHz, with a price of $278, this was no longer a top-of-the-line CPU. Still, having 1 MB of level 2 cache, additional instructions and a better manufacturing process, this CPU should uh, better the original Pentium 4 by a good margin. But most of the tests showed only little or no improvement. The overclocking potential of the CPU is better in this case maybe because of the lower manufacturing process, 90 nanometers versus the original 130 nanometers. The limiting factor in this case was the motherboard, but we were forced to use this one in order to have all the other components, like in the other tests. The overclocking process was pretty painless, I only had to increase the front side bus. Just like with the Athlon 64 939, the Pentium 4 looked like it hit a barrier when overclocked. No instability, no issues, just the motherboard will not boot anymore. The results of the overclocked scaled in a line with the frequency and the numbers showed like we had a 3.6 CPU on hand. The only downside of the operation was that the RAM refused to start with the increased frequency and we had some penalties there. Overall, I was expecting a bit more out of this CPU, but by the looks of it, Intel repacked the last year's processor on a better manufacturing process. So the fact that the 949 Athlon 64 processor has caught up with the competition and even surpassed it in some areas makes me think that the AMD was a better choice back then. I also feel that the temperatures were a bit lower on the AMD. Intel still has the upper hand in productivity areas and we haven't tested the hyperthreading performance. We will have a special clip dedicated to hyperthreading for this CPU and the original Pentium 4 before the final conclusion of the series. Thank you for watching and see you next time.